Hi, I'm Todd. I'm not experienced with video essays, and my setup and editing probably suck. But some things have happened recently that reminded me I haven't spoken out as much as I used to lately. Today, June 10th, is my 46th birthday. I came out to a friend for the first time a little over 30 years ago. I've seen a lot happen to LGBTQ rights, good, bad, and ugly, in all that time, and what's going on in the US and the world right now against queer people, trans and gender nonconforming people especially, hurts on a level I haven't felt in a really long time. 24 years ago this month, June 1998, I was walking with my future husband through the streets of downtown Orlando, Florida. We were marching in the Orlando Pride Parade, and it was my first ever Pride event. And we were marching between rows of rainbow flags that were flying from Orlando City lampposts for the very first time. I attended a couple gay rights and AIDS awareness demonstrations before that, but that Pride Parade was the first time in my life that I truly didn't feel alone and isolated in my identity. My first Pride was life-changing, and I recommend going to a Pride event at least once. August of that same year, we were walking down those same streets when I leaned in to give my boyfriend Adam a kiss. Not 15 seconds later, I felt a bang at the back of my head and a flash of white in my eyes. I fell as the beer bottle that hit me clanged on the sidewalk. I was kicked in the ribs and the gut. Adam managed to pull my attacker off me and chase him off as I bled on that same street I marched along only two months earlier. And only two months after that, a young gay man only six months younger than me was beaten to death in Laramie, Wyoming. Matthew Shepard. He too was a cis white man, so his murder made the news nationally, unlike transgender victims of violence today. Those two events scared 18-year-old me, but they also made me angry and more politically energized. I attended a Pride Festival the next year, and every year after that, until the COVID pandemic hit, and I attended many political demonstrations over the years. In 2000, I helped to direct hundreds of thousands of marchers onto the National Mall in Washington by freak chance, and my future husband was interviewed and quoted by AP in every newspaper in the country the next day, even in places like Lawrence, Kansas. <laughs> and in 2009, I organized protests after a gay bar was raided by police, 40 years after the Stonewall Inn's infamous raid and riots. These are just the little contributions we made, tiny parts of the continuing fight for all our LGBTQ family. With everything going on today, we need people who are willing to be activists again. We have hate preachers directly calling for the execution of gay and trans people. We have self-described theocratic fascist podcasters calling to make it illegal for doctors to provide transition services to anyone. We have so-called journalists talking in language of outright genocide of transgender people because, quote, every one of these people are basically, you know, a huge problem to a sane world. I'm not even going to mention their names here because they don't deserve a platform. They and their hate deserve to be forgotten to time. But evidence is linked in the video description. Well, I'm angry now. Are you angry? You should be. It doesn't matter whether you're cis or trans, straight or gay, or anywhere in between. You should be absolutely furious that people are spreading hate like this. Even attacking children who are just trying to figure out who they are and where they fit in the world, and right-wing politicians are eating it up. I fought for all of us, literally bled on the same streets I marched along just for the ability to be myself, and now we're rolling back all the progress we made in the last quarter century. And just this week, someone very close to me told me that they decided to go back into the closet for their own safety. It broke my heart, not because of them, but because of what this hate machine inflicted on them. We fought for decades to prevent this. This was not supposed to happen. It's time to bring back a visible fight for queer rights. For those of you who have the inner strength to be involved, seek out political action groups fighting for LGBTQ acceptance near you. You'll probably find some of them with booths set up at nearby Pride festivals. I also linked some resources in the video description to help you become politically aware about queer issues. Please feel free to add more in the comments. Join, listen, learn, and most of all, speak out. We need you. For those who cannot fight or have to retreat into the closet for your own protection, we understand. My generation especially understands. We still fight for you, for all of our queer family. We fight to make it safe for you to be yourself proudly again. And 
to the hateful politicians trying to take away our identities, trying to divide the queer family by creating fake LGB groups to exclude trans people, trying to label us that old hateful trope of predators or groomers that gets trotted out every single decade. I have this to say. We're here, we're queer, and don't just get used to it, accept it. We will fight you at the ballot box, we will fight you in the courtroom, we will fight you with demonstrations of visibility, and if you continue to inflict violence on our community, our family, I won't be surprised if we recall the actions at Stonewall 53 years ago. The philosopher Karl Popper warned us that a tolerant society must not tolerate intolerance, so we will not tolerate your hate. Be on the right side of history and accept us for the genuine human beings that we are, or just get out of the way. So, thank you for watching. I don't know that many people will even see this video. Algorithms are algorithms and they do what they do. But if this inspires just one more person to get involved, it was worth it. And happy Pride Month. This time, let's not just make it a month or even a year. This is our Pride Decade. Own your identity because no one else in the world can tell you who you are. You are not alone. And I promise you, whether or not you feel accepted by your family and friends, you are loved.